Would you guys in this video be taking a look at ransomware and how it infects your system and how you can go about removing it. Now ransomware is on the comeback and there's quite a lot of it about on the internet at the moment and it's infecting people pretty rapidly and as some of them uh, what they're doing is uh, called master boot record locks and what happens is you get infected with it you'll go to reboot the system and it will lock you out it will automatically shut the system down and then it will lock you out of your system there's also these types which we've got here which threaten you and all sorts of stuff now this is a particular porn site here from Russia as you can see people then browsing the internet looking at porn and uh, what they want to do is they want to see the images of these uh, images here they want to see the videos of these images so they go scrolling through and uh, all of a sudden they click on one of these which may be the case they may find one that they like think I like this one I'll click on that and what's going to happen is up pops a little uh, codec that says you need to be uh, obviously looking using this to view the videos you then click on this and then it will click run now you're not going to get any video what you're going to get is an infection and uh, this is a typical way of getting infections young youngsters or older people look at uh, porn and obviously if it's a, a not reputable porn site if there is ever a reputable porn site uh, you're getting infected so what we're going to do here is have a look at what's happened now it's blocked us right out so the desktop's completely gone and uh, this is the box we've got now you can put codes in here now we'll um, actually convert this text this uh, Russian text into English for you so you can see what it's saying it's basically threatening you saying you need to pay such and such uh, to get unlocked basically unlock your computer so when you reboot the system with this particular virus it's going to do the same in safe mode you can't get into safe mode it locks you completely out so what we'll do is I'll show you how to remove that now I'm going to show you the same thing in Vist uh, uh, XP as well it does do it in Vista so I'll just show you uh, XP and Windows 7 this is Windows 7 and uh, I shall show you uh, what it looks like in Windows XP it's pretty much the same thing and we'll reboot and I'll show you how to remove it ok so let's uh, boot the system up into XP and show you what it looks like ok so we'll load up quickly XP here and I'll quickly show you in safe mode too it's the same for um, Windows XP as it is uh, Windows 7 I have found with Windows 7 64 bit uh, the actual virus doesn't always work properly and you may be able to get to safe mode that's saying that it doesn't do that with uh, XP at all it will lock you out both ways so uh, as you get to your desktop it should lock you out and there we have Windows XP locked out as well we'll quickly reboot into safe mode and show you the same thing in safe mode okay you're going to be tapping F8 on the keyboard here to enter safe mode with networking or safe mode either one of these two it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be able to do anything including a command prompt it won't let you in there at all so we'll just boot this up sucker up and see what happens I know that once we get to safe mode it's just going to block us out no matter what account you go into here it will do the same whether it be administrator or bright they're both administrator and it will lock you out full screen like that exactly as it happens there you can't do anything okay so I'm going to show you how to get around that now you may be thinking use a bootable CD like Kaspersky or one of those types of CDs like a, a Dr. Webb's Cure and stuff like that they don't work it won't clear this the only way I found clearing it is using a pre-installed environment and then removing it from there and editing the registry because you'll delete the file and what happens is when you delete that file there's a user init file that is is created and uh, it will recreate itself so it'll keep happening over and over again and it can be quite frustrating if you don't know how to do it so let's reboot the system into ultimate boot cd for windows and uh, i'll show you how to remove it okay so I've got my CD in here I'm gonna boot to this CD now this is ultimate boot CD for Windows okay so that's uh, near enough loaded in now so what I'm gonna do here is just say no to the uh, networking side of things 
but we don't need that at the moment. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, have a look in my computer first, and uh, I want to actually find the file that's causing the problem. Now this is the Windows XP version, but it will be the same on uh, Windows 7, a slightly different where the file is located. Uh, so I want to go into the C drive here, and uh, I also want to go into Documents and Settings here. Now for Windows XP, it's not in the actual account; it's actually in uh, All Users, and then it's all it's in Application Data. And if you see it there, that's where it is. Now if you look inside Brightech here, which is the account that I was using at the time, there's no file there, so you may find it a bit peculiar. So have a look in all users application. My mouse is playing up. Okay, so that's now deleted and then I want to go into Windows and then come down to Okay, come down to System 32. Now we're in the uh, C directory here of our operating system, and you can see this file here. Okay, now that's the user init logon application. That is the Microsoft one. What it's done is it's renamed that file. Okay, you can see that by looking at the screen there. So, what I want to do first. there. So as you can see that is the culprit there that's been uh, changed so what we're going to do is delete this file and uh, we're going to go back up to that file and then rename that user in it. Here's our file Okay, so there we have for the. Uh, what's happening here? It's just spazzing out on me. Okay, so we're going to change that to use it in it. Like so. Okay, and then what we want to do now is come out of this area. Okay, so what we want to do here is go to the programs registry tools and I want to click on registry edit remote. Okay, and that's going to allow me to edit the registry of my C drive. Now I want to go into Brightech here and click OK. Now this is important because if you don't do this, what's going to happen is, you know, uh, maybe uh, sorry about that. So you want to go into um, H key local machine here, and then uh, software, and you want to come down to Microsoft. Then you want to scroll down to Windows NT, and then current version. And then you want to go to, let me just pull that to the side there so you can see, Win Logon. And once you're inside here, you want to go to the right hand pane. Wow. Okay, you want to come down to Shell here. You can see Shell. You want to click on that. And as you can see, it's been changed. Okay, so what you want to do here is you want to type in there. explorer.exe like so and then you want to check your user init file okay so let me just check that you want to make sure that it's got the comma and everything's looking okay and that's how it should look 
Now sometimes this gets uh, changed as well, but in this case it hasn't, so that's good. And pretty much now, what we'll do now is reboot the system, and we'll see how it goes from there. So I'm just going to quickly reboot. Okay, so we'll let this reboot now, and hopefully the infection should be gone. And then once we get to the desktop, I would suggest you run Malwarebytes to uh, tidy up. And then we have the desktop back to normal, didn't pay no ransom fee, and you should be up and running. Now I hope you appreciate the amount of time uh, this takes to actually work out how to kill some of these uh, viruses. And if you do, then please hit that subscribe button, and also show your support there guys, favourite and rate my videos. Okay, so... Uh, We've got the Windows 7 uh, boot up now, and as we can see, we're just going to go into this into the C drive, or it'll be D on the uh, bootable CD, but it is the C drive of Windows 7. And where you want to go for here is the program's uh, data file or data file. Inside there, you'll see the file there, and you will just want to delete that file and then go through the same process if it if it needs to be done. Okay guys, I'm out of here. So thanks again for watching guys. My name is Brian from brightech.co.uk. Bye for now.